Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Denis and this is the latest update from Ukraine. One more Russian oil refinery facility was targeted by unknown UAV. It happened in Rizan Oblast, so as you can see, for the second day consecutive, the Russian infrastructure oil facilities are under the fire. And this is the drone which was spotted in the skies of Razan. It looks very similar to Bayraktar TB2, but it's not. It's much smaller and probably was ordered from Alibaba. Ukraine has already used many of the China-made drones. They officially ordered those, modifying them and later on using against the Russian infrastructure. Sometimes, as you can see, quite successfully. If we check out the map, Rizan is located over here, so for Ukraine it's the long way actually to target this region. This is the impossible task for the Bayraktar TB2 drone with a maximum range of 150 kilometers, around 100 miles, and this distance is around 500 kilometers. Obviously, it influences the internal oil market of Russia too. Soon, ordinary Russians would have to pay for the fuel more. But the main thing that the oil refinery facilities are used to produce diesel fuel for the Russian tanks and armored vehicles. And by targeting those, Ukraine slows down the Russian army in Ukraine. I think that this strategy really works. As you see, Ukraine has intensified those attacks. The most of the Russian oil refinery facilities are within the range of the Ukrainian long-range drones. So Ukraine might potentially damage the Russian oil infrastructure a lot. And we have multiple of the reports about the Russian targeted oil refinery facilities. Ukraine was definitely successful out there. And we have the rumors from the Russian side that Ukraine might land their forces in Novorossiysk port, which is the biggest Russian oil port in the Black Sea. I heard the similar rumors about Crimea, but this information is coming from the Russian military bloggers. They say that Ukraine targeted many of the military ships of the Russian Federation in the Black Sea to free the way for the landing operation. Well, it is hard to say whether this operation in Novorossiysk will be conducted, but Budanov, the director of the Ukrainian military intelligence, says that Ukraine is planning the operation in Crimea probably a landing operation. The Ukrainian military intelligence also reports that definitely A-50 Russian AVAX airplane was targeted in Tambov military airfield, then it was located inside the hangar. So we have the official statement, but without the real evidence, I mean photos or videos from the actual place. So it just depends on you guys whether you want to believe in that or not. With the other airplanes done by Ukrainian side, we always had some of the proofs. But here, personally for me, it's really hard to judge. To confirm it 100%, we need the real evidence but it only could be presented by the Russian side and obviously they're hesitating to do so. On the other hand, not providing the evidence from this hunger also might be some sort of the evidence. If nothing inside was damaged, so please show us the place. The Russian Legion of Freedom continued to film the videos from the Russian side and how they advanced towards the bordering Totkino village. But here, this video was filmed on Ukrainian territory, as later on was investigated. We definitely have the confirmation that this particular building, on the background uh, with the soldiers, is located in one of the villages on the territory of Ukraine. We have the geoposition, so you may check it out yourself on the Google Maps. And this is the spot very close to the border. The Russian propaganda put it as a fake victory of the Russian opposition forces, but it is not. Those forces are definitely in Totkina village, which is on the Russian-controlled territory. But this video was really filmed on Ukrainian territory. Those guys were advancing towards Totkina. For more reinforcements, yesterday we already seen many of the videos of how the Russian Volunteer Corps advanced towards the Russian side. And now Russians want to make a fake out of it. So those guys, yes, by that time were not in Totkina, but now they are. The Russian opposition soldiers say that they have plans to go to Moscow, but I think that it's not possible, they do not have enough resources. My prediction that it will be finished as always, they're gonna return back to Ukraine after Russia sends some of their reinforcements to the place. And according to the recent frontline review, Russia is definitely struggling in Totkina, losing the armored vehicles out there. Yesterday it was even confirmed by the drone video, so there's the Russian BTR, and later on it was targeted by the FPV drone. And after a while the artillery shell hit the place, where the Russian armored vehicle was parked. 
Also, the Russian MLRS Grad system was targeted really far away from the border with Ukraine in Belgorod Oblast. The system was caputed again by the FPV drone. The distance from Ukrainian border to the place where the Grad was ambushed is nearly 10 kilometers. Now let's go to the different front lines update, for example, in Krasnogorivka, it's not really far away from Marinka. So Russia tried to perform their counteroffensive towards this settlement. Let me show you more specific details. So actually they were attacking from the south but were ambushed, as you can see, over here. Sadly, Ukraine also lost some of the armored vehicles or tanks. And Russia continued to use the aviation bombs against any kind of dissolvement near to the front lines. It is their strategy to eliminate everything on their way using artillery, aviation bombs, plus what they do to harm Ukrainian artillery far behind the front lines are the Lancet drones. Nevertheless, somehow Ukraine still holds in Krasnohorivka. The general idea for Russia in this sector is to advance towards Kurahova, but they cannot do it directly through this highway. They firstly need to expand this bridgehead to the nearby villages and towns to avoid the possible encirclement by Ukrainian army. That is why they will try to advance towards this lake at first. Let's go to the southern part of Ukraine, the Krinky village. The Ukrainian bridgehead that still holds for many months already. Today we have the information about the small Russian attack in the place which was repelled. Ukraine uses the cluster munition to target the Russian forces across the Dnieper river. I also obtained the information that Russia is planning something big in this place, they are collecting more forces and soon will advance with tanks and armored vehicles, hopefully this Russian attack will be repelled. Because before all of the attempts to get Krinky back under their control were collapsed by our artillery and FPV drones. And we have just obtained a new update, uh, let me check out the place, so Russia advanced in Novomikhailovka a little, yes, and more for today, let's go to the timeline, it was yesterday and it is today, it's not a little, they advanced quite a lot, taking this field under control. We also have the update in Orlivka, so it was yesterday, it is today, Russia took a single house. Orlivka is over here, not far away from Avdivka, so Russia was able to get a single house for two days, so definitely their offensive stalled a little in Avdivka direction. But they advanced a little on the south in Peromaiska, so it was yesterday and it is today they took this street under control. And if we check the mount direction near to Terni, Russia also moved for today, but also they were pushed back in this place. According to my information, the Russian attack was successfully repelled. Nevertheless, with all of those midwaves, Russia is getting closer to this settlement. Their goal is to advance towards this lake. In general, about the vehicle losses, Russia still loses more compared to Ukraine. So, for the last three days, Russia lost 176 of the vehicles, Ukraine 73. Just look at the number of the Russian armored vehicles, all of the BMPs that they lose. BMPs, BMPs, MTLBs, supply vehicles, mostly those being destroyed in the failed Russian attack attempts. We have also sad news about Ukrainian helicopters and helicopter pilots. Ukraine lost at least two of the pilots because our helicopters were ambushed by the Russian cluster munition aviation bombs and also later were targeted with some sort of the ballistic missiles. At least I see it from this video, those are three Mi-8 helicopters. Here you can see the cluster munition in operation and later on some sort of the strike where those helicopters were ambushed. It happened 45 kilometers away from the front lines. Usually those helicopters are used to launch their rocket shells towards the Russian positions. As you see, being that far away from the front lines doesn't help. The last week Russia also targeted Heimer's rocket artillery system which was located also 40 plus kilometers away from the front line. To conduct those operations Russia is using Supercam or Zala drones. They have a long range up to 100 kilometers and able to provide a constant video signal to the operator. Plus Russia also has military satellites. And we witnessed that Russia gradually improved the communication between their forces, between intelligence and air force plus artillery. From the time that the drone identifies the target, there are just few minutes pass for decision making to start the attack. Also, I still do not exclude that there is some red in Ukrainian military command. Because somehow Ukraine starts to lose a very critical and important military equipment in just recent weeks. 
important radars, air defense, Patriot, Nassams, Hymers, this time helicopters. This situation looks very fishy, especially for Ukrainian Army Command. Russia has never ever was that successful targeting our equipment behind the front lines. But they had aviation and those drones before. Something really strange as for me. Finally, Schultz said why he doesn't want to supply Taurus cruise missiles to Ukraine. The reasons are secret. Schultz, come on, what the hell? What kind of the secret thoughts you have about Taurus? Just supply those to Ukraine. All of the allies from UK and France are laughing at Schultz. Yeah, I understand that Germany supplies lots of the military aid for Ukraine, but we need Taurus cruise missiles. Otherwise, Ukraine isn't able to cut very important supply connections for the Russian army. Storm Shadow and Scalp are not really for that purpose. They have much lower range compared to Taurus, so German-made missiles could be really a game-changer for us. Well, not strategically in this war, but they might reduce the casualties for Ukrainian side. But this guy is not really that interested. Even though Bundestag, the German parliament, had already voted to supply those missiles to Ukraine. Well, they didn't specify the exact Taurus missiles, they spoke about long-range missiles. But what other missiles do you have in Germany? Oh my god, what is happening? Even Marine Le Pen starts to support Ukraine. Marine Le Pen, who supported the occupation of Crimea by the Russian Federation. Now she says that to the attack Ukrainian nation, we own probably our respect and support. Russia triggered a war from Marie Le Pen. I wonder what changed her thoughts. It's like Viktor Orban would suddenly become the advocate of Ukraine. So even French right wing, if you may call her that, support Ukraine. France is really impressing now. A French prime minister also supported Ukraine by saying Slava Ukraini. I think France is preparing something because they also announced a meeting between them, Germany, where they are going to discuss the war in Ukraine. Meanwhile, Kai Kaas, the Estonian Prime Minister, says that they cannot guarantee that Estonia would not send the forces to Ukraine. She says that there are some of the countries which send their soldiers to Ukraine. That's why I cannot promise that Estonia will not do the same. Because Russia is the threat for Estonia. Putin said that he is ready for nuclear war with the United States if they send the forces or the troops in Ukraine. Well, I wouldn't trust it, even though I think that Putin is crazy, but he is known for bluffing. At the very beginning of the war, Putin threatened the Western countries not to supply weaponry for Ukraine, otherwise Russia would use extraordinary methods against those countries. What kind of methods? We haven't heard about anything. Well, probably banning the French wine was the hardest their decision against the Western countries. But I still think that Russia might try to use some of the nukes, the tactical nuclear weaponry, under some certain circumstances, because we had the report about it from the United States intelligence, but now United States say that there is no direct nuclear threat from the Russian Federation. Meanwhile, Putin says that they are ready to use nukes at any moment. Also in his interview, Putin said that they don't want to negotiate with Ukraine just because Ukraine is running out of the ammunition. Clearly, he says it, that Russia will continue this war. A message for everyone who believes that there is some sort of the agreement possible with Russia. To some of the international news, it seems like TikTok will be banned in the United States. At least House of the Representatives voted for that. Total is 352, yeah, and nay, 65. Well, for me personally, before I was kind of against the TikTok, but now I watch many of the videos that our soldiers film from the front lines and post those to TikTok. I have my own account on TikTok as well, but there I post only about aviation. The last time I posted there was maybe two years ago. Nevertheless, I got many of the subscribers. I just want to see the alternative for this platform you're watching me on. There is no such a big alternative to YouTube right now. So TikTok probably was the only alternative, but since it will be banned in the United States, I'm almost sure about it, because President Biden said that he will sign this bill if it would be agreed by Congress, it will just end TikTok. Because the biggest market for it is obviously the United States of America. So I would like to see something similar to TikTok or YouTube, but made, for example, in the United States or in Europe. A good solid alternate, because all of those rumbles 
well, there is not enough audience out there, not like in YouTube. Nevertheless, I have the alternate for YouTube, it's Telegram. There I post some of the videos and text information. I use it as my backup resource to keep in touch with you, my friends, so I highly recommend you to subscribe for my Telegram in the video description just below. And you know, it's kind of hard to block Telegram. Russia tried before, now Ukraine also tried, but came out with solution that it's basically not possible. The vice president of Lukoil Russian oil company somehow lost his life. We have just a fact that it happened, but when and how, no one tells. What is interesting that for the last half a year, it's already the fourth top manager of Lukoil who loses his life. Smoking really kills, especially near to balcony. My friends, please don't forget to press your huge like to this video, by doing so you help me a lot. And also, if you want to support my job, you may check out some of the links in the video description just below. You may support me on Patreon or just on YouTube, sponsorship or membership. Thank you so much for your kind support. My friends, I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.